So the philosopher Kierkegaard used to say that anxiety is the dizziness of freedom. <laughs> Tolstoy used to say that anxiety comes from our inability to find a way to bridge the finite, which is what we are, with the infinite, with the cosmos. And it is the anxiety, the fundamental incongruity of mortal beings who dream of immortality that is at the root of our condition, the fire in our belly. And so the fundamental question becomes, how does contemporary secular man, how does the human being address <laughs> the anxiety, the paralyzing anxiety of his condition? Now, David Lenson, the comparative literature professor who wrote the book on drugs, has a marvelous take on this idea of how to address the systemic anxiety of our condition. And he says that basically anxiety is temporal dislocation. It stems from our inability to be in the present. It stems from our overactive neocortical hardware <laughs> getting, I guess, obsessed in rumination with this idea of this impending future that we can't control, the idea that time is slipping away. So what he says is really interesting. He basically says that people who are really anxious, aside from being highly sensitive, are people who have experienced trauma at a very young formative age, whether it's the divorce of your parents or some traumatic, terrifying experience that marked you for life, right? Because our cells are a technology for turning experience into biology. So if you've had a traumatic experience, it tends to echo in the back of your mind into your adult life. And so what he says, he says that anxiety or panic is really when the past in over-determining the present, in over-determining the present, conjures up a future that becomes inevitably identified with death prescience of mortality and awareness of mortality is a hallmark characteristic of any kind of panic condition. So he says what is ultimately an experience of temporal dislocation, again, the past overdetermining the present, becoming identified, you know, conjuring up a future identified with death, is really an inability to be in the here and now, which is why the hallmark of meditation, of breathing exercises, of mindfulness teach us to be in the present, to silence that monkey mind. You know, Stephen Kotler and Jamie Wheel, when they talk about getting into flow, one of the hallmarks of flow is the silencing of our inner critic. It's a sense of selflessness, timelessness, effortlessness, and richness. So it really does, you come to realize, it really does seem that the solution to anxiety is activities that hurl us into the now. Finding something that is greater than yourself. Getting caught up in a, project, in a project, in a heroic project that taps you into something greater than yourself. And by hurling you into the present, by becoming entranced in this idea, you fundamentally dissipate that obsessive, rumination, anxious mind. And, uh, you know, Lenson says, if you make peace with past, present, and future, you tap into instead what Richard Alpert calls the deep now or the eternal now. And the past, present, and future collapse into a continuous field of time. And when that happens, um, when you're at peace with past, present, and future, there will be less need to escape the, the sort of immense power that the present acquires during during moments of anxiety because you won't you won't you won't be afraid you'll be at peace with your past at peace with your future so there'll be no need to run away from the now which makes a lot of sense so anyway things to keep in mind tap into flow remember that anxiety will dissipate it's just a form of temporal dislocation everything is going to be all right nothing is actually wrong right now except your brain is over determining <laughs> you it's using the past to over determine the present and get freaked out about the future Sit back, relax, take a breath, find something to distract you. And remember, the hallmark, the solution to the human conundrum is find something more sublime, more gripping than your own 
tedious every day. Connect with something sublime. Connect with something that is full of meaning. Get lost in signification. That seems to be the solution. Certainly one way that I have found that works for me. Cheers.